Will the virtuous Sangha out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung thin dai duk tang thin Vi thư pháp hồi cập nhật thiết chung sanh Tịnh chuyến diệu pháp luân giao đạo ngã mùng như há liều sanh thoát tư ly khổ đạt lạc tất chứng vô sanh. Hamid to the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô sa đàn thổ sư chế đô yê la hơi đi san miao san phu tô xế. Nam mô Ta Rắc Tha Tô Giả Đa Gia La Hà Đề Tam Yêu Tam Bồ Đà Tỏa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang 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 wei miao fa ba hei chen wan jie nan zao yu wo jin jian wen de shou qi Yuan Jie Ru Lai O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Venerable Hui Nang, Venerable Shen Hua, Venerable Lafon people, and all good new advisors, Amitofo, Jufu Pusa, Liu Tzu, Shifu Shang Ren, Gowei Chi Shang Ren, Gowei Shang Chi Shi, Amitofo, Chư Phật Bồ Tát kinh thưa lục tổ hòa thượng tuyên hóa ký thầy cô và ký vị thiện trí thức A Di Đà Phật. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Glad to see you. We are here to continue discussing the last part of the Six Patriarch Sutra, the last chapter. We are very, very close to the end of it. Uh, all good things must come to an end. Uh, let's see. First, or oh, what's going on? What's that? All oh, the six page chart, or the photo six page chart, like, like that, of his, uh, his uh, roshan, his uh, dead bodies. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Hmm. From where do you get this? Oh, Nan Hua Su. Oh, this is from, from uh, the, uh, okay. Uh, somebody help me put it on the altar, please. I don't want to be lower than me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hmm. All right. What's Buddhism about? All right. the, what this great patriarch is doing is to... Uh, explain to us the Chan Dhamma door of Buddhism. This Dhamma door of Buddhism, this Chan Dhamma door is the most important Dhamma door to perform a practice in order to do what? To open your wisdom. Okay? Uh, when you open your wisdom, the immediate effects is that you stop making mistakes Okay? You suffer because you make mistakes. 
Okay? When you stop making mistakes, the suffering begins to disappear. So in this path of cultivation, as you gradually develop your wisdom, you make fewer and fewer mistakes. And you make less serious and less serious of mistakes. Okay, so that's why this gradual path is a path of uh, gradual lessening of the suffering. Okay, and if you reach the end goal of cultivation is that transcendental wisdom, meaning that we figure out a way to get out of this world of suffering. This world we live in is a world of suffering, okay? And we can get out through this Dhamma door of enlightenment. So by opening this uh, prashya wisdom or transcendental wisdom where unfortunately for the world, only the Buddhists own it, have it. Uh, in, even in Buddhism, within Buddhism, only the Mahayana practitioners would have it, okay? Uh, in particular, this, again, the Six Bay Chart is famous for teaching this sublime Dhammador of Chan, okay? Uh, and, and so, uh, so in on only does, uh, does this uh, Chan practice enable you to reduce suffering and eventually end your suffering, and also, in this process, help you increase your bliss. Okay? The bliss grows, the suffering lessens. So as your suffering uh, lessens, it's replaced by bliss. So it's a dual process, it's a natural process. You suffer less, you, your bliss will increase. Okay? Uh, so it's not about the truth. The other religions are talking about, I know the truth. I know, I know, I know. No, this is a state of being where it's not about the truth. It's about your wisdom. It's not about your smarts. It's about your wisdom. Okay? Smarts is primarily uh, for the purpose of serving yourself. Wisdom is for primarily serving others. If you really have wisdom, you'll be serving others instead of serving yourself. So what does it take to open this wisdom? The Chan Dhamma door is very, very clear. You talk to the Pure Land Dhamma door, okay, the Pure Land practitioner, he said, I recite the Buddha's name, I go to the Pure Land, and the Amitabha Buddha will take care of me. He would teach me how to open my transcendental wisdom. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, what about the... Uh, so the Chan Dharma door uh, is a Dharma door specifically designed to help you, you open your wisdom right now, this very lifetime, preferably. If you open your wisdom, poof, all sufferings come to an end immediately. Sounds good? Okay, well, there's a sign-up sheet here for the paying session. All right, we'll continue our class. Huh? Okay. Uh, so what does it take? Huh? Would you like to know how to end your suffering? Huh? The Buddhist is so scientific, folks. Especially the Chan Dhamma door is so systematic. It's so, it's so clearly delineated. What is a path? And unfortunately, again, the Hinayana Buddhists don't know this. Only Mahayana Buddhists has a clear pathway on how to get there. I know many of you have been, you've been uh, coming here and following us for a long, long time, some as long as a year or more. We haven't really talked to you what is this, this, these, uh, these 
what, are, what is the big picture? Okay? I just started by mentioning to you that you need to, this path way here, as you walk it, okay? And you don't quit, okay? The key here, this is why we have the difference between you and left home people. The, you quit at will. Whenever you don't feel like it, feel like it, whether, whenever, whenever you know, I yell at you and you, you know, I disagree with you and come out of here. Okay, I have better things to do with my life than put up with you. Okay? But with the left home people, they're different. They have no choice. I feed them. I clothe them. Uh, I give them lodging. I give them pocket money. I give them gas money. Where are they going to go now? They're used to being useless to society. <laughs> okay? So they have no choice. Still, they have to hang in there. So their training is more obvious than yours. Your training is that they're not supposed to quit. Because if they quit, they lose it all. When you quit, you have so much to gain. Self-respect, notoriety, wealth, pleasures. Okay? Whereas these people, yeah. so the training is different from you. This is why what makes Buddhism so different, our style of Buddhism training is so much different from the others, is that our Buddhism is that these novices, these left home people, the biggest problem is what? To quit prematurely. Questions? I ask you left home people. I ask you Sunnis. I ask you Taikoa. Okay, Lamas. Anyone ever taught you that? The secret about the training program for both left home people and lay people is that you quit. You learn not to quit. Because the nature of challenges, the nature of destruction is to entice you to quit for whatever the reason that makes sense to you. You don't quit. This pathway here will bring you gradually. As you hang in there, you gain more and more benefits. For some, it's very fast, some very slow, but it might go, you know. So the pathway is different for each and every one of you. The same thing, the same rule of thumb is hanging there long enough, you see the benefits. Someone asked me, I've been working hard, I've been doing that, I've been doing that for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it or not? I said, well, I don't know. Uh, let me see. <laughs> what did you do again? Do more. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, so if you hang in there, you know, the benefits are either visible to you or they're being hidden, they're being built up, okay, for you to leap. All right? Mm. And uh, there are milestones where uh, you, as this process here, you see these, these important criteria, these important changes that you can observe within you. I was talking, uh, I, when I was driving uh, a car for a few hours recently to a gentleman who said, you know, I talked to your disciple who, that you sent to Korea, and oh my God, I look at her and say, has she changed so much? And I say, yeah, that's the nature of this process. You change, you improve, you become better as a person. We're not talking about wisdom yet. 
Just become a better individual, a better human being, a better brother, a better sister, a better son, better daughter, better professional at work, better boss, better demon. That too. Hmm? Everyone improves. Right, cool? That's what we observed. I observed the last 15 years. Those, uh, those uh, evil people, they improve, improve, and then to the point, of, oh, I'm so good now. I can really do more evil by getting away from here. <laughs> so, threw him out. Uh, go do your evil. Here, you have to be good. So, they've been restraining themselves. I got to be good here to stick around here. But I can't take it in much longer. The excitement of doing evil is just too much. Okay. So they had to run away. Okay. Uh, so everyone improves. Okay. Uh, demons become nicer even. <laughs> uh, and so that's, that's what you will all observe. Okay. This, this, the way Yang style training is very, very clear, okay? Uh, even though you don't, you don't see, you cannot see uh, things that clearly are, have clear measurements, but there will be inside of you, your heart, you feel good. People around you uh, are like you more, okay? Uh, uh, and so forth. And then... And then you get to the point, very important milestone that you want to get here before you quit. Okay? Which milestone? Does anyone know? I'm nearing the end of the sutra, so I need to stretch as much as possible, okay? <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> this sutra lecture, this sutra is so, so cool. And I hate to finish it, to be honest with you. Okay? So what, are, what, what is this milestone that's very important? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you need to be enlightened. <sighs> anyway, else? Hmm? Anyone else? Anyone else? Master, the um, milestone of samadhi, different levels of samadhi, because it's a milestone each time you reach. So, yeah, 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 okay. Different samadhis, higher samadhis. And then what? The very important milestone in Buddhism. Yes, Q and A. Uh huh. First stage, aha. Uh -huh. First stage, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay. The when you do the Buddhist practices, the first thing you want to do is get into first dhyana. Okay. You experience this bliss that you never experienced before. Okay? In our environment, it's easy. Almost all. Actually, I can't think anyone who hasn't entered yet. Okay? It's fairly easy to end the first yarn of the way we set it up for you. Now, the next milestone, okay, uh, is uh, uh, first stage ah ship. Very good. Mm hmm very important, significant milestone is that when you reach first stage ahaship, you begin to appreciate non-worldly things more than worldly things. You're not as easily confused by worldly things when you get there. The nature of our existence is that it's we so easily influenced by externals. Okay? Like what? Fame. 
Yes? Notoriety. Yes? Money for me. Yes? Red cars is, a, is my second weakness, among other things. I have a lot of second weaknesses. All right? Mm. So first is I have to be very, very good. But the price for us is reach fourth stage ahadship, ninth samadhi. Why? Yes. Uh huh. Uh, fourth stage ahadship, ninth samadhi is the first level of enlightenment. First enlightenment, you'll be able at that stage. You'll be you qualify you qualified for a uh, special treatments that beneath we don't bother with you okay he says like beneath uh, dime a dozen <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so confused i mean <laughs> we tell you you don't you don't get it anyway okay so the fourth stage of heart is very very important uh, in a context that you need to get there and know is only a intermediary state is not the ultimate goal. That's very important. Okay? That's all. All right? Mm. Uh, then after that, you can be taught about the truth that six page chart is talking about. So, going back to the verse here, okay, um, just to give you the context, okay, uh, he says on, in his uh, verse here, in 278, Sutra text and slide 278, um, you must see the true within your own mind, Okay? Uh, this is uh, a process to help you discover the truth. Because right now, whatever you can understand, whatever you can perceive is false. Chinese are saying, Everything is false. How's my Chinese? Good? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. There's hope for me after all. <laughs> okay? Uh, country, the Korean Sunims. Long way to go. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And if you find this true here inside your mind, you will definitely uh, accomplish Buddhahood. Okay? A lot sooner than you think. Okay? Problem is that in order for you to find this true that you own, you don't know where to look. That's what he says here in 278. Okay? Uh, are, are we in 78? Where are we? Mm. Okay, here. Uh, you, you, you need, you need to, to, if you want to find this true here, you, you cultivate here, you just don't know. You wouldn't know where to look. You wouldn't know at all. There's no way for you to know. No matter how genius a, a person you are, how, how smart, how rich, how powerful, how famous, it doesn't matter. You would not know where, you would not know where to look. So the six page charts is very, very blunt in his Chinese way. I'm making it more blunt for you because in the West, we need to be precise. You cannot, you know, speak like the Asian way. They speak obliquely because they're afraid to offend you. Here, we need to let, you know, let you have it. Uh, you confuse like hell. So what, what do confused people do? They do more confused things. Whatever they do is confused. 
Okay, so that's why this is the basis of why the sixth patriarch says you would know, would not know how to look for the truth. You would know how to how how to do it. So far, so good. Next, he says, uh, because that true here, the important that true here uh, that you need to uh, find the truth because that is the key factor to your becoming, reaching the big, getting the big price, okay? And the true there, okay, can only talk to you after you uh, uh, reach fourth stage of heart. That's why the fourth stage of heart is very, very important. So far, so good? Hmm. Uh, and how do you look for where are we? Are we in 278? Are, are we are done here? Huh? Where, where am I? The last time I talked, I stopped. Was where? 279? Okay, let's go to 7 and 279. Okay. Okay. I need to make a change in this translation. Okay. Last week was the first time I look at his verse, so my translation, my proposed translation is, was not quite, I wasn't quite pleased with it after I finished the lecture. I said, I could not, I dropped the word yo here. Okay, the Chinese teaching is very, very precise. He says, okay, uh, Unless you see the truth within your own mind, okay, uh, that truth there, uh, when you have that truth, that is a cause for you to become a Buddha, to become enlightened, become a Buddha, okay? So I drop the yo, yo here is to have. So that's why, that's add to it, okay, to... Capture the patriarch's intent. That's not drop things from his teaching. The, the yo here in Chinese is very important. Okay. So you say, that true, uh, when attained, that true attained is. Got that? So just add the word, that true attained. So that we translate the translation is more, uh, more um, accurate, more reflective of the patriarch's teaching. Is that clear? Okay. That true attained. Or he speaks colloquially, that true there okay, is your treasure. The treasure is not your money. Your treasure is not your house. Our treasure is, besides the temple, is, you know, really, there's nothing else, okay? The treasure is the true that you can attain. So that's why when you, when you, the, the Chinese, and the Chinese language, Asian language is very polite. I mean, same thing in Chinese and Vietnamese and Korean, they're very polite. But for us, and so that's why they use the word attained. If, you, if I were to speak of this concept in English, okay, I would say that true secured is much more, that much more, much more indicative of what I have in mind. Okay, this teaching here is, you want to secure this true here because it's your treasure. We've been chasing after nonsense our entire life. We didn't, we didn't know. When you discover this truth here, you say, wow, this is it. I've been, what have, I've been doing my entire life. I've been wasting my life after nonsense. So after you secure this truth, this is why this is treasure that you want to secure yourself. Is that clear? So the concept here is yo, here's Chinese. It's actually, it's, it's meant to say that true 
must be secure, not simply attain, but secure. So that's how I would, I would write, write it in English. And you would trans translate into Asian language as yo, as, as attain. So far, so good? So there's difference in culture. Okay, for us, to me, it's, that true is a treasure, therefore it must be secured. Like your precious possession in your house. You know, you put it in, you put it in that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, was it, safety? Huh? That what? Safe, safe box, thank you, thank you. I know I have one, that's right. Uh, all right, so the true, the true attained is the cause for you to realize Buddhahood. Until that true is attained, you cannot become a Buddha. You're still very far away from it. So far, so good? All right. Mm. Mm. So that's why this process here, the Chan process or Pure Land process or Tantra process or teaching process, okay, uh, is to help you secure that true, if you will. Questions, comments? Yes. Uh huh. I feel like uh, that true nature is always there, uh, even when we're in pain and even when we're suffering and stuff. But it's just that uh, we we choose to look at our uh, ego and our afflictions and our uh, stupidity as that's real and not the true within us is, is being real. We, we choose to look at the... Um, because you cannot secure it. That's why you keep on losing it. You see? The Chinese don't say, yo, here's actually like, I own it. It's mine. In that context of yo. In English, it's I secure. It's, it's, it's in my possessions. It's in my safe deposit box. It's in my safe. Okay? Because it's invaluable. Yes, one. So uh, the concept of it's in your safe does that mean like you can't lose it when when times are tough? You know, you you, you still don't lose it. You have access to it. Open, it's there. Okay. So actually, secure is better than yo, in that sense. Okay, what I want to stress is that even though you're aware of it, but it's not secure, what are you going to do? You have to share it with your wife. So you lose half already. Not funny. Okay, okay. Yeah. Next. Okay, you like the, the, the truth attained, the true attained? Hey, you Chinese people, is it okay? Korean people, Vietnamese people, huh? You have to, you have to preserve the yo concept, okay? All right, we we'll improve on the yo a little bit. Q&A, go ahead. Master, um, a comment. Um, what about holding on to it? Um, I, I feel the secure skewed has this maybe possibility of it's kind of out of sight, it's hidden. But then like my understanding of this yo is kind of like you really uh, not let out of sight, you keep using it to guide you. So there's it's a bit different from Okay, shoot her down. <laughs> Go ahead, shoot her down. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's too violent, huh? Okay, uh, let her have it. What is he talking about? Okay. No, the here, clearly, she's too Asian. She doesn't stand secure. Okay. Secure is you, 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 make sure that you have you 
you have access to it. Okay, it's, it's safe. No one can access it but you. Okay? Because, for example, the true there, the demons cannot see it. They cannot find it. Only you can find it. All right? Demons wouldn't know what it, what it is or where it is. All right. We ignore her in San Jose for a moment. Yes. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, next. Next part of the verse. Not to see yourself in nature, but to seek the Buddha outside. Yeah. Okay, so this and Chi Xin Chung Shu Da Chi Ren. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, let's, try, let's change his translation a little bit. They don't understand what the patriarch is trying to tell us. He says that because you cannot see yourself in nature, you go seeking for the Buddha outside. That kind of thinking is a is is that such thinking is that of a very deluded person. Can we change it, please? Let's see if, uh, if Soju Sunim uh, English is good enough. You see her typos and so forth. It's just a little bit of pressure, that's all. Don't help her. <laughs> I announce to you? Wait a minute. <laughs> How does this go there? Did you do this by, all by yourself? Wow. <laughs> you know it from him? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> okay? So the, the, the patriarch is very clear. He says, our common, our, our condition, our human condition, we cannot see the truth. We cannot see the, our self-nature. That's what we seek outside for, for the Buddha. Okay, seek outside for uh, the treasures, for the big prize. Uh, such thinking is normal. And that's the kind uh, that for, for, for deluded people, extremely deluded people. What does it mean? It means that all the Buddhist training, Chan, Teaching, pure land, all points back to look at yourself. Don't look at all these faults. Don't argue with your mother. You know what I mean, okay? She's wrong as her problem. You don't argue with her, okay? You embrace her, yes, mother, I still love you. You're so wrong, I love you. Because deep in my heart, I look at my heart, I don't see anything wrong. I just see love for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay? Same thing. You argue with your husband. Stop it. Yes, he's difficult. <laughs> but, but, uh, you love him. 
<laughs> I saw yesterday an old couple, you know, and uh, the man, you know, typical old Asian man, you know, I'm going to do my thing, woman, you know, I got a thing. You married me all these years, didn't you? I mean, <laughs> you should know it by now. And the, the, the wife would tag along and say, yes, honey, yes, honey, yes, honey. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's so happy the guy is, decides to come to the temple and to, do, med- to meditate and, you know, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Kind of sweet. Okay? So deep down, see, that's what I saw. I saw, oh, this woman really loved her husband. But she, the Asian, they don't say it like us, you know. Westerners, I love you. I love you, even though we don't mean it. <laughs> yes, five. Alex is asking, why is the pain we feel while sitting not our self-nature? It feels like it's naturally arising and part of the wisdom of the natural body. Uh, let me think about it. He's, this Alex guy keeps on uh, arguing and arguing and trying to understand. All he needs to understand right now is to bear the leg pains and more and more of it. That's all. You no need to understand why. Okay? Because even if I explain it to you, you don't get it. That's all we don't bother explaining to you. If you have the blessings, you be willing to endure the leg pains. You don't have enough blessings to tell you, you know, until, until we're blue in the face. You won't do it. Nothing we can do. You will understand yourself by going through this process, not by thinking, not by, by deduction, not by reasoning. Okay? So that's why Alex's question is consistently why I need to understand, I want to understand. Yes? Smart people, yeah? <laughs> Tell me why. There's no why. Just do it, man. I mean, girl. Okay? This is where, well, this is where smart people fail miserably. You say, you have to tell me why I, I, I must do this. Uh, you must do it because it's good for you. Because it will free you from your stupidity. You have to do it for that to happen. You cannot, uh, you cannot use vaccines. Okay? Anti-vax people. <laughs> Never mind. Are we, did we agree that I will not talk about politics anymore? <laughs> okay, I take it back. Okay. All right. It's, it's no why. It's just, if, 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 it's just like because Alex has no respect for me. If, like, if the six page chart looks at him and say, hey, cross your legs, man, and endure. He says, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. But why I tell him, why? And this is what I get all the time from all of you. Why? Why must I do this? Anyway. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? So this is the Buddhist stamp. This is only in Buddhism that you will find this type of teaching, this final practice where you taught to look at yourself only, not at anyone else, for to discover your wisdom. Okay? You want a big prize? You have to find it within yourself. It's right there. You just can't see it. That's all. So we need to help you, prepare you, navigate you until you see, oh, originally I do have it. Okay? Uh. 
All right. Continuing? Yes, sir. One. Uh, that line reminds me of this little passage in the Vajra Sutra where the Buddha says, if you seek me in external objects or external things, uh, you're practicing a deviant path. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's another way to put it. 280, two set text. I now leave behind the Dhamma door of a certain teaching to liberate worldly people who must cultivate themselves. I announce to you and to future students of the way, if you do not hold these views, you will only waste your time. <sighs> translation, translation, translation. The Chinese people, uh, uh, they don't understand these people. They don't understand even their own Chinese language. Okay. Dun jiao fa men jin yi liu. Jin here is not now. Jin Chinese means now, today, present. But it's, it's, it's a padded word. It is not, it's, it's not, doesn't mean anything here. What he says, my entire teaching career, I've been teaching you the certain teaching. So now I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I look back what I've done. I say, yeah, I did leave you everything. I left, um, I gave you the certain teaching already, as of today. You understand? Hey, Chinese people, you agree or disagree with me? Huh? He says, today, when I look back, what I did, in my, my entire teaching career, yeah, I did leave the entire teaching, certain teaching, Dharma door already. All right? See how precise the patriarch's intentions are. He says, as I look right now, as I take a look back, I say, oh, yeah, I did my job. I finished. I'm finished. That's why I can leave now. Is that clear? Okay. So you translate. I says, as I look back, As I take a look, as I look back, okay, I already left, I already uh, gave you the certain teaching. So he's typing and you're not. Okay, next sentence. Jiu Du Shi Ren, Xu Jiu Xiu. In certain teaching,
As I look back, I have already given you uh, all the certain teachings. So all is implied. Okay, the, my entire certain teaching I want to give you all of it already. Okay. Uh, uh, No, all is what I added. Is a commentary, is I would add all. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the commentary. Okay, in the commentary here. Okay, I would left all of you, all the certain teaching. Because what happened is uh, the students said, did, did, did you uh, give us everything that we need to know? That's what happens in the, the uh, psychology. The students said, is there anything else? That I need to know. Did I miss anything? He said, no, I gave everything to you. Okay? What for? Uh, in order to rescue and liberate people of the world. Who? Must themselves cultivate. The two seal here is the emphasis in the Chinese. And when you reverse the order, you destroy the emphasis. Because the, the, the teaching, part of the teaching, Buddhist teaching is you must do it yourself. You cannot do it for your mother. You cannot do it for your daughter. You must do it yourself. Okay? And the best thing you can do for your daughter is to encourage her to do it herself. The best thing you can do for your wife is encourage her to do it for herself because only she herself can save herself. No one else can. If she's not willing to save herself, help her get to the pure land. There where the Buddha will teach her how to do it. And she have plenty of time to learn and to perfect it. But here we don't have enough time. The, the lifespan in our world is too short. We don't have enough time. So those people who are not willing to do it themselves, we have to send them to the pure land. Okay? Uh, okay? Any questions? Yes, five. Master, can we go back to slide 278? Certainly. Um, Zhi Hong is asking, Qi Xing Zhong Shi Da Chi Ren. She's asking where to put the Zhong and how to translate Zhong. Oh, I didn't translate Zhong. Okay. Zhong Shi Da Chi Ren. Uh, uh, 总是 is, uh, is uh, I translated it with that. I took liberty there. Okay. Uh, the 总 in Chinese, I substitute 总 with that. Such thinking is that. 总是 here is in, in Chinese mean it's, it's uh, invariably is that of a deluded person, extremely deluded person, greatly deluded person, okay? But in English, it doesn't, doesn't ring, it's not, it doesn't flow, okay? Invariably is that, invariably is, it's just, it's uh, excessive. It's just that is stronger. Not as strong, not stronger, but, but it, it conveys the, the emphasis. Invariably is excessive in English. Does it help? Okay, very good, good question. This lady is, is a, clearly is a professional. Uh, 
understand. See, I'm trying to teach the Chinese uh, how to translate. <laughs> uh, lost cause. Okay. Uh, in order to rescue and liberate people, okay? Uh, what's the difference between, uh, between chiu, tu? Chiu is rescue and liberate. What's the difference, okay? Rescue is for the people who cannot help themselves. So how do you rescue them? I just told you. Send them to the pure land. Where they can play the trombone. Yeah? Huh? Then bring the trombone to the pure land with them. Okay? No problem. Mami Taba would use a trombone, certain damador. Okay? Certain like my damador. Okay. Do here is liberate. Okay? Those people are, are able to uh, cross them over, cross over the sea of suffering. Okay? Rescues, they cannot help themselves. They're sinking. They cannot cross over. So, zoop! Use a time machine. Okay? Use, uh, use the, 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 the Pure Land Dharma door to, to sweep them off their feet and, you know, bring to the Western British Pure Land, to the Pure Land. Whereas liberate are the, uh, is for the people who have potential. They can be taught. They can attain uh, happiness right now. They can attain liberation right now, this lifetime. You see? So the Chinese is very precise. There's a chiu du. And somehow it's not translated. Okay? It's different, different dhamma doors, different approaches for different types of people. The people who have do roots, who not absolutely not interested in cultivation, they must be rescued. I'm sorry. Okay? That includes uh, who? Senators. I stopped there. Okay? I have self-control. <laughs> okay? So, you see, so they must be rescued because they cannot help themselves. Okay? And liberated is the ones that have the chance to become enlightened this lifetime. So far, so good? Okay. Xu Zhu Xiu. Okay, next. Bao Ru Tang Lai Xue Dao Che. Okay. Bu Zuo Zhu Jian Tai Yu Yu. Okay. I say to you, future students of the way. Hey, now we're Chu Hung here. Does he agree with that? She agree? That's, that's what he's saying. He's not saying, I, I'm not, I announce to you. I announce you. We don't say that in English, do we? I say to you, let me tell you. Yes, let me tell you. But it's, it's too colloquial. It's too southerner. I say to you, future students of the way. Why does he only address future students of the way? Because his followers know it already. His only emphasis, because he ignores them. He says, hey, you know already, didn't you? Huh? Don't you? You, you, did, you did know, didn't you? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, you said, you told us already. You see, that's a sort of BSing with the current followers. You're special. You know, I, I, you know, I told you already. You know already. You know what I mean? So this is very kind of clever way of saying, yeah, you already know, but let me tell these future students. And by the way, I'm reminding you two idiots who have not paying attention, been paying attention. You see? 
See how, how beautiful the patriarch is addressing both future and presently absent-minded people. You agree? You see how subtle the teaching is. Yes, six. I just wanted to, I wanted a clarification. I guess when he says, I've taught you sudden teaching Dharma, and now you must cultivate yourself. I mean, to know sudden teaching Dharma implies that these students are already at the level of a good knowing advisor. No, they, they, they must, they, everyone must, the future people of the world, everyone should realize that there's no substitute for cultivation. It's not about knowing. It's not about understanding. You need to do something. Cultivation is to do something. You don't sit there, I, I want to understand. Tell me why. The tell me why is secondary to you do it first, I tell you why. You don't do it, I'm not going to tell you why. And that's, that's built in the Buddhist teaching. You have to do first. Then I explain to you. You don't do it. There's no point in explaining to you. That's why you must cultivate yourself. Okay? Right. I say to you, future students are away. Okay? Right. If you do not hold uh, this view, you are too lazy. I mean, uh, we can't say that, can we? Uh, go ahead, Q&A. Uh, I'm here for, I'm here for Master. Uh, I think um, the six patriarchs said uh, his student already knew it. Uh, and um, because he tossed them a, a couple of times before already, I recognize one time he uh, hit the um, Shin Hui uh, that he, um, he, he said he's, he saw and he didn't uh, he see and, and he didn't see. And then uh, Shin Hui said uh, um, that uh, it hurt and it, uh, it not hurt. So he explained that uh, you look inside, you see your own mistake and all that, that, uh, that the path uh, to cultivate already here. And it's the same here. Uh, he repeat again that uh, you look inside, see your, uh, see your Buddha nature. Mm -hmm. You missed that. No, it's not what, what the, that teaching was meant to, to do. Okay? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. No, not at all. You, you, you don't understand that, that teaching. It hurts or doesn't hurt. That's not, it's not, it's not what it's meant to do. Okay? Not the way you guys think. It's not, it's not. When, when he said, you know, uh, when I hit you, when he told that, 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 uh, that boy, Shen Hui or Shen or whatever, uh, he says, uh, uh, he's a smart aleck of a boy, so he hit him. I said, when I hit you, does it hurt or does it hurt? Okay, well, that's, that's meant to, to teach him something, but the boy's answer is just still very stupid. So, so that's, that the boy missed the teaching completely. That's why, that's why the six patriarch um, uh, had to continue. Okay? Uh, no, it's not that at all. Anyone else? Q&A. Uh, con có ý kiến thế này ạ. Bây giờ mình nói định nghĩa cái từ trước đi. Mình nói Phật. Phật là gì? Phật Ấn Độ kêu Vũ Đà. Người Trung Hoa gọi là giác giả mà dịch theo tiếng Việt mình là cái người biết. Cục đá nó không có biết. Mà cái chúng sửu tình con người, con chó, con chim, rồng nó biết. Cái biết đó hồi nãy mình tụng kinh Phổ Ngô, Phổ Ngô, Đại Bi Sám đó. Con với Phật đồng một cái biết đó. Chúng sanh mười phương hữu tình đồng cái biết đó. Nhưng mà vì một phút vô minh con khởi lên đối đãi mà nó cột con tới ngày hôm nay. Con sanh phiền não. Thì thì mình 
trong kinh cũng có dạy mình là những cái đối đãi đó cái 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 ly lăng xăng trong đầu mình đó, nó không có tự tánh nó mượn cái này mượn cái kia để mà mình chấp là mình rồi nó cột mình bây giờ mình biết nó giả nó không có nó luôn luôn nó depend on something mình biết nó giả nó không có thật mình buông nó đi buông hết mình còn cái gì mình còn cái biết cái biết mà phía trong sáng cái biết đó nó với chư phật mười phương đồng một thứ mình nhìn đó là trong mình nó tổ nó tự tu thì biết thì mình nhìn đó là mình mình có cái đó trước khi mình khởi yêu ghét mình cũng còn cái đó luôn luôn nó ở với mình nên mới gọi là như lai hòa thượng nhân quá nó không có đến không có đi nếu nó đi nó đi đâu nó đến ở đâu nó đến nhưng mà cái gì xảy ra thì mình biết cái biết đó cái khả năng đó là gọi là phật ai cũng có mình nhìn nó vô trong mình mình thấy cho nên tổ mới biểu các ông tự tu đi các ông biết nếu ông nhìn ở ngoài là mấy ông ngu si chẳng hạn như cái ngày trí thường còn một cái ý nghĩ duy nhất là tôi còn thấy internet thì tổ nói sai rồi ông còn thấy internet là cái bầu trời như một cái tâm ông như bầu trời xanh vậy đó minh mông xanh biết không có gì hết mà ông còn một cái tia chớp là bầu trời xanh một cái một internet ông đâu có không đâu khi mình bỏ hết cái mình buông hết cái ý nghĩ vọng tâm phân biệt ngu si của mình đó, mình còn một cái bầu trời xanh cái biết biết đó chính là cái phật tánh của mình đời đời kiếp kiếp không có bị hư hoại không sanh không diệt còn mình theo cái những tia chớp những cái lăng xăng đầu mình là mình sẽ bị sinh diệt là mình đau khổ suốt đời thôi mình nhìn vô trong mình mình thấy mình có cái không đó cho nên kinh pháp hoa mới nói là cùng tử trở về với cha cái cái bỏ cái ý nghĩ lăng xăng mình đi trở về cái không của mình cái biết của mình đó thì mình có cái đó sẵn mà đâu có ai đem vô đâu ngày đêm nó ở với mình không biết ở đâu nhưng mà mình cái gì xảy ra thì mình biết thì cái biết mà trong sáng đầu tiên đó Cái đó là cái mình với Phật cùng có Con xin hết Try translate that Yeah, I'll try my best But I'm for sure I will not be able to translate everything So, um, first of all When we talk about the words Buddha What is Buddha? So in in India, Buddha they uh, is, they use the word Buddha, and then it, when it's translated into China, it means that uh, the person who know. And then, like for example, the rock doesn't know; its insentient being does not know. But then the sentient being, like for example, the dog, the dragon, the animal, they have the know, the the knowing nature. So in the great compassion repentance, there is a, a repentance verse that say that me and then I and the Buddha have the same knowing, but because of our ignorance and then because of the affliction, that's why it cover up our knowing nature. And then now you need to aware that whatever you know is just um, not real. And then you need to look into the emptiness and then you uh, you let go of your attachment then your knowing nature is the same as the Buddha and then before you arise any thought of love or hatred or whatever the moment before that thought arise that is the true suchness which is like not coming not going and which is the same knowing as the Buddha That's why uh, the six patriarchs say that you need to cultivate yourself. You should not go look outside or chase after outside. And then er uh, earlier in the sutra, uh, Chi Chang told the patriarch that he still see the emptiness and then he... Um, Thầy Hình Trì, Thầy Trí thường nói là vẫn thấy cái, cái, uh, cái tánh không hả Thầy? tôi còn thấy được cây ngũ quẩn dây không thì tổ nó ông còn thấy ngũ quẩn cái ý nghĩ thấy ngũ quẩn dây không nó nó analogy nó giống như một cái thí dụ là một cái bầu trời xanh cái mt cái biết của ông đó, nó bị một tia chớp thì làm sao còn một trời xanh nữa ông còn giữ cái ý là ngũ quẩn dây không cho nên ông chưa có thấy được cái không đó cái ngũ quẩn dây không là cũng là một ý nghĩ khởi lên trong đầu mình thôi nên tổ nó ông chưa có thấy chưa có thấy cái tánh không không so chu trang say that i see that the five scandals are empty 
And then the six pager say that if you still see the five scanner are empty, it's meaning that you haven't seen the emptiness yet. It's similar to the analogy that there's the blue sky and you still see there's a flash in the sky. And uh, it means like you haven't really seen the two emptiness. And he also uh, say something about the uh, flower sutra. The analogy is similar to the poor son that come back to meet with the father. And then he say that the, the emptiness is the initial things that you need to, to see. Yeah, còn một cái nữa là uh, Đức Phật thí dụ những cái người mà chạy theo cái pháp tiểu thừa đó, còn thấy khổ tập diệt đạo rồi còn tu pháp uh, ba mươi phẩm trợ đạo đó, tu những cái vậy đó thì nó trái với lục tổ dạy là phải thấy cái tôn giáo đó. Thì trong kinh pháp qua Đức Phật thí dụ những người mà theo cái pháp tiểu thừa đó là cái người đi, một người cùng tử đi hút phân thôi, không có nhận được người cha mình là có một cái gia tài một cái đồ sộ như vậy. Tức là cái người chạy theo Nam Tông mà làm như vậy, Pháp Ba Bãi Trợ Đạo hoặc là Pháp Khổ Tập Diệt Đạo Đắc A-la-hán đó thì chưa có đi tận gốc vô mà mình không có nhận mình là Phật sẵn rồi. Thành ra Ngài Thần Hội mới nói là ngay cái môn manh mà ông nhận ông là có cái không đó thì ngay lúc đó ông là thành Phật chứ không có trải qua Tăng Kỳ Kiếp như bên Nam Tông. So furthermore, the Buddha gave the analogy that uh, in the Hinayana people, they still see, they still chase after the Four Noble Truth, which is uh, the Four Noble Truth, and then the 37 method of supporting cultivation in order to attain our heart. They, the analogy is similar to the poor son that uh, he was doing the... Uh, job of uh, cleaning up the mess, the dirty thing, and then he didn't aware that his father has a huge, um, uh, like his father was is very uh, rich and has property, but he didn't aware of it. So that's why they, the Hinayana people, they didn't aware that they are the Buddha. <laughs> Thì Ngài Thần Hội mới nói cũng giống theo cái cái, cái tiêu chỉ của Ngài Bên Năng, Ngài Thần Hội cũng vậy vậy đó. Nếu quý vị có niềm tin, hôm qua Thầy giảng chữ phép đó, cái niềm tin của Kinh Quang Nghiêm hôm qua đó. Quý vị có niềm tin biết là mình có cái Phật tính đó, mình với Phật một thứ. Thì ngay lúc bây giờ mà nhận được như vậy và tính chắc như vậy thì ngay bây giờ là thành Phật chứ không phải trải qua A Tăng kỳ kiếp như người Nam Tông. So um, later on in the teaching that Shen Hui also teach similar to the six patriarch say that you need to have faith to have faith in what to faith, have faith that you do have the Buddha nature and the moment you are aware of it you and the Buddha are the same and then you immediately attain enlightenment don't have to uh, wait for the uh, countless uh, 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 lifetime in order to attain it. Okay. Uh, good input. But that's not why I'm looking for. He's, what he says is correct, but it's not what uh, this patriarch is uh, talking about right here. Uh, I say to you, future students of the way, okay, uh, if you do not hold this view, that's correct, you are too lax. Not a waste of time. You're too lax. Okay? What's the meaning of this? It has two meanings. It's not, you know, 
you have two lakhs. Uh, the teaching here is for uh, two kinds of people. The people who are working hard like us, okay? Uh, Uh, the people who are cultivating, uh, like us, in our temples, we still two lakhs. Okay? Whereas the people who don't cultivate at all, okay, then uh, you are, uh, you are uh, wasting time. So wasting time alone is not, is not what Yo-Yo is talking about. Yo-Yo here refers to two kinds of people. Uh, the people outside, we call them lax, is because they are looking at the wrong problems. They're not having a big picture in mind. They're caught up in this confused, confusing world. They allow themselves to be stressed out. They allow themselves to be deluded by appearances, okay? They're too lax because they're solving the wrong problems. They're wasting time. We're too lax because we are still not vigorous enough. So yo-yo here refers to two kinds of people. Otherwise, the teaching is not complete. There's certain teachings for everyone. Is that clear? I'm, I'm really taking a lot of liberties with the Chinese language, okay? So I'm expecting the Chinese to rebel and say, uh, you know, even Chinese, how dare you tell us how to interpret our language? I'm not Chinese, but I'm Chan. You're Chinese, but you're not Chan. Okay, so we have to find a common ground somewhere. Can we move on? Okay, so he says, I say to you, future students, the way, meaning for you who are, you know, who, are not, who don't know, uh, for you behind me, you know already, but let me remind you, okay, uh, that you need, to, you need to rescue, you need to liberate people, and in doing so, you actually are cultivating yourself, okay? Or you students who are people in the world who, have, who, who believe that have, you have better things to do for yourselves, okay? Uh, you, uh, you, are, you are too lax with your own life, your own lives. You're forgetting the big picture. What's going to happen to you when your life comes to an end? How does your political views going to help you? How does your fortune going to help you? Have you thought about that? You're too lax. You just take it for granted that you're in control. You're not in control of your life. You're too lax. Okay? You're so, you're so self-complacent. You're too lax. You're too complacent. Is it better complacent or lax? Hmm? Complacent? Huh? Huh? Uh, I only have two, well, three white, four white people here, so. Too complacent? It's better, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You're too complacent. Too lax is too colloquial. Yes? Okay, you're too complacent. Okay, so the great teacher says, in summary, on this phase here, and this applies to all of us, including the Sunims, including you monks and nuns here, and future students of the way, the future students of Mahayana, the current Hinayana practitioners, Everyone, pay attention. As I look back at the time I spent here on this earth, 
Master Huy Nang said, I did give you the Buddha's certain teaching. It's here in this sutra. You go back and consult with it. Look at it. It's there. It's all there. Okay? Uh, what it's for is in order for you to utilize it to rescue and liberate people And you must teach them and they must cultivate themselves. They must cultivate. If they want to end the suffering, if they want to experience true happiness, then you must do something. Okay? This is what they're teaching. They say, it's there. You must do it. You don't just say, I believe, I believe, I understand, I understand. You must do it. You must cross your legs. You must recite sutras. You must do something. You must bring sutras to the temple and listen. Okay? You must do something yourself. Don't just sit there and say, tell me, tell me, explain to me. The explanation, Alex, comes because you're doing it. I don't answer his question, because he's not doing it enough yet. It's, it's too premature to tell him. It's called premature explanation. Mary Jo. <laughs> <clears throat> so I tell you to you, future students of the way, the way here is in cap. Way here is only one way, the ultimate way. Okay? If you do not hold this view that you don't, that you must, that you don't have to cultivate you, but you, 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 you refuse to cultivate because you don't understand. Okay? You do, if you think like that, you're too complacent with your own success, with your own, with your own uh, beliefs, with your own lives. In a, in a strong message, it's very compassionate mes- message. It's, it's very, very, he really cares. And he's actually, you know, he actually, you know, he says future students, the way actually he's reminding these people right behind him, say, hey, you idiots, work harder. That's your problem. You've been here, and why is I'm here? You say, ah, oh, I still have time. What's the hurry? Now I'm leaving. You better work harder. You're too complacent. That's why I have to leave. You see that? It, it has multiple dimensions, multiple facets. He addresses future students as well as his own students. All right? Can we move on? How come the Chinese are so quiet? Okay, that's it. That's the verse. Isn't that cool? That's it. We finished the verse. Hallelujah. Hey, good job, everyone. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Okay, now we can go have some gelato. <laughs> and uh, we did good. I mean, to go through this and endure through this, it's a... It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a quite a, a quite a significant achievement because we interpreted or translated the Chinese bay chart and put it into our language, the language of our times. Okay, why it has happened this way? Because you leave it like this in Chinese or in Korean or in whatever languages, Vietnamese or whatever. They're going to continue to think the Chinese way, the Vietnamese way, and so forth. They're going to struggle with this. They will not be able to understand the patriarch's intentions. That's why I took a lot of liberties, and I, I prayed that the sixth patriarch would correct me, or Master Shohao correct me, so that, I, so that we all can benefit from it. All right?
Okay, now I think we have something prepared for you. Yes? <laughs> yes, sir. Number one. Uh, Master, you've been teaching the Six Patriarch Sutra since um, Lu Mountain Temple, and then yes, sir. It was the the original name is the is it the Great Six P Patriarch Sutra or some kind of longer name? Yeah. Was that the yeah the Jewel Platform or whatever? And did it uh -huh. did it take three or four years or four long? years plus? Yeah. Because I had to watch the old videos on YouTube to even know what you're talking about because I just jumped into it and mm -hmm. yeah when I walked in true. and it was six patriarchs yeah we work hard yeah we work very hard the last four years Ching. <laughs> <laughs> not we you know not quite there yet but uh we're almost near the end okay yeah. where did where did this uh this uh this uh this uh, this verse begin. I don't know where anymore. Does anyone remember where which uh, slide it is? We get lost in this process. Okay, so. I think this is where the verse runs. Okay, 264. 244? Seriously? No. You can't be serious. 261. The verse runs right here. You're disagreeing with the text? Okay, as I was thinking about today's lecture yesterday, I thought that maybe we should have, we had, I came up with this idea, we should have the, uh, uh, the verse in different languages. Okay, so I thought that uh, uh, maybe you'd like to hear the verse in uh, a different language. Huh? 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 Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so let me try this for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, so are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, so I'm going to read the verses now, huh? Right? Right? <laughs> Okay, are we ready? Are you ready? Okay, so I'm going to start reading the verse, that, you know, this thing here. Okay, right now. Yes, yes? Okay. I'm going to start right now. <laughs> the, 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 true, the true suchness, uh, self nature, is the true Buddha. <laughs> Deviant views, the three poisons, are the demon king. At times of deviant confusion, the demon, the demon is in the house. But when you have proper views, the Buddha is in the hall. Deviant views, the three poisons produced within the nature, are just the demon king come to dwell in the house. Proper views casting out three poisons of the mind transform the demon into Buddha. True, not false. Dharma body, reward body, and transformation body. Fundamentally, the three bodies are one body. Seeing that for yourself within your own nature is the Bodhi cause for realizing Buddhahood. The, per the pure nature is originally produced from the transformation body. The pure nature is ever present within the transformation body. The nature leads the transformation body down the proper road, and in the future, the full 
imperfection is truly without end. Lust fundamentally is the cause for purity. Lust expelled is just the pure nature body. Each of you within your mind natures abandon the five desires. See your nature in a kasana. That is truth. This lifetime you encounter the sudden teaching Dharma door. Which helps you attain sudden enlightenment and see yourself nature and see the Buddha. If you wish to cultivate and aspire to Buddhahood, you would not know where to look for the truth. Unless you can see that truth within your own mind. That true attain is the very cause of you to accomplish the Buddhahood because you cannot see yourself nature. You seek the Buddha outside. Such thinking is that of a very deluded person. As I look back, I have already given you the entire sudden teaching. In order to rescue and liberate people of the world, you must who must themselves cultivate, I say to you, future students of the way, if you do not hold this view, you are too lax. Complacent. You are too complacent. As promise, uh, the verse is in a different language. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, Yana is going south. <laughs> Anna and I had to preach the word. <laughs> preach the word. But hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Seriously. Set a nine. <clears throat> Hello, nine. Uh. Hello? Okay, he's working. Um, when he was talking, that kind of reminded me of the Baptist church when they preach. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like they yell at you and they, um, what I have seen actually, and they just talk like that. It's kind of funny. It just came to me. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's dead. He's dead. He's a priest. <laughs> Was a priest. <laughs> He's the son of a preacher. Yes, number nine. Ba Baptist people don't have priests, they only have preachers. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Preachers. <laughs> they have preachers, they don't have priests. Yeah. Okay, yes, number two. I just rem it, you just reminded me to old brother where are the, <laughs> the, the movie. Uh -huh. The movie, yeah, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a moment of levity right there. Uh, are we, should we continue with our tr search of the truth? <laughs> okay, uh, slide 282. Sutra text, having spoken the verse, the master continued, all of you should take care. After my extinction, do not act with worldly emotion. Okay, two eighty three. Uh, Having spoken the verse, the master said, uh, all of you uh, should take care how true. Uh, uh, be well, okay? Uh, how true is to dwell in goodness. Okay, if you, 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 you take it, you take it, uh, you, you translate literally is dwell well, okay? You stretch a little bit. 
is dwell in goodness is what he really means. Dwell well is the life form of be well. But actually, if you really understand him, you really care for this, his teacher here, you should dwell in goodness. A good teacher would not say those words. The good students will understand those words. Any problems? Okay? Uh, so, uh, so I would translate this as all of you be well. That American expression captures it how true. How true right there. Okay? Dwell, be well, meaning be a good person, be in good health. Okay? Be in good company. Be in good places. So be well. Okay? And, and for a cultivator, a disciple, a follower of his, be good. That captures that, all of that. Be well. All right? After my extinction, uh, do not act with worldly emotions. <sighs> After my extinction, do not indulge in worldly emotions. Avoid worldly emotions such as what? Huh? Anger? Huh? Very good. What else? Huh? Love? Uh huh? What else? Greed? Okay? See, those are worldly emotions. World emotions. Do not indulge in. Zuo here is start, initiate, act, do. Okay? So indulge captures all that. You do, you act because you allow yourself to do so. Okay? Yes, uh, number nine. Quick question. I don't know what you guys think about this, but my question is, is happiness a worldly emotion? Is happiness a worldly emotion? Help him. Help them. For me, it's yes. Uh, you, true happiness is not. Are you answering yourself or are you going to let me answer you? And I'm just curious about Buddhism, what they think. Uh, do you want an answer or are you just... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, then, then give us a chance. Yes, one. Uh, so far, we only named like the bad worldly emotions and they could lead to pain, right? But there's good worldly emotions like happiness like like he said and like what, what even i know bodhisattva is all about being kind but if it's worldly emotion wouldn't kindness be worldly emotion as well compassion because because you can't have compassion without there being a world you know what you, I mean? you begin to sound like the old monk he just asks is it or isn't it so is yes or no oh i was going to ask you the question before he asked Okay, so now not just a non-Buddhist question, but also a Buddhist question. <laughs> Let them have it. Anyone can help him out. Hmm? Is that a worldly emotion or not worldly emotion? Yes or no? Hmm? Now everyone is scared. Yes, go ahead, one. I'd say no. 
No, it's not worldly emotions. Why not, sir? I'd say because happiness is about looking out for others and helping others too, and then that wouldn't be a worldly emotion. That's, so you're you know, happy when you help others? Yeah. Yes. How about helping yourself? That too. Yeah. That too. So others include you. You're so selfish. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, one. What I would say to that is, uh, uh, well, if if, uh, if you're if you're helping somebody, and and then then there creates a separation between you and them. There's you, and there's them. And the only way a world could be formed is there's multiple things. So worldly emotions means all, all emotions connected between a separate you and and them. And you that, sound like Alex now. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Son, Alex is not asking questions anymore. Anyone else? Is happiness a worldly emotion? Yes or no? We have a no already. And they have a yes. Who else? Hmm? Okay. Uh, since you all defer to my uh, judgment, <laughs> you are too complacent. <sighs> Can we be blunt about this or must we be polite? Blunt. You prefer blunt. You insist on my being blunt. Thank you. Your happiness is worldly. Yes? Hmm. His happiness. <laughs> is it worldly or not? Hmm? Is it worldly or not? Some, I hear it sometimes. Yes, sir. Let the Buddhists have it. <laughs> I think it depends. Oh, when he's in Samadhi, when he's in Samadhi, he, he has a, that will be true happiness. When he's just helping others and feels good about himself, that's worldly happiness to me. Uh, you see, this, this is what the Koreans uh, don't understand about us. We argue back and forth. The Koreans say, I agree with you. Okay, the Koreans never argue. But for us, we just back and forth, back and forth. You Republican, you Dem I mean, you uh, uh, Catholics, you Christian, and you Buddhist, and you non-Buddhist, you externalist, you, you know, and so forth. We love to do that. But, but the, the Japanese, the Koreans, they say, no, no, we don't argue. We love each other. Yes, sir. <laughs> Number one. Uh, he said you experience happiness with your samadhi. Uh, the other day, I, I was going to tell you this. The other day, uh, I was at home and I was sitting longer, longer than I normally do, and it was uh, really painful. And and I was I was happy before I started sitting. I remember I was feeling really. And happy. you sat and you feel so miserable. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't feeling miserable at all. But I was. I wasn't happy, and I, I wasn't. I, I mean, I. I definitely start feeling a little evil. I don't know why. Evil. But, yeah. But, but then, but, no, but but then I realized I was I was somewhere in between good and evil. I was like in the middle of good and evil, so I wasn't happy, but I wasn't angry at the same time. It was like somewhere in the middle, so it w it wasn't like worldly emotions in there. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. Okay. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I will never know what you mean. Sorry. Anyone else? Let me explain to you, okay? Anyone else wonders, who else wonders your happiness is worldly or not? Raise your hand so that I can answer you. Hmm? Anyone curious at all? You know, I know you Asians go to fortune tellers and they you know, pay the money and say, hey, tell me about, tell me about me. <laughs> my future, my past, and so forth. But when I ask you, would you like me to tell me you about you? You say, oh, no, 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 no. 
<laughs> it's free. Huh? Anyone would like me to tell you about whether your desire for happiness is worldly or not? Anyone? Okay, that's three. I have three people, four people. Okay? Raise your hand, please, so that I can answer you. The one, number three in the back. Raise your hand, I will answer in each and every one of you. I promise. Okay? Three people over here. Yes, number three. That number three finish, and we take a survey. Okay? Would you like me to tell you, and I will answer you? Yes, number three. M M Korea, too. I mean, uh, Xianan, you can raise your hand, too. Yeah, go ahead. M M Okay. Okay. Yeah, we ignore that. Uh, she's old, so we want to be gentle with her. Okay. Okay. So you want me to tell you whether your desire for happiness is worldly or not? Yes. Yes. Is it worldly? Okay. Uh, the answer is yes. All of you, that I saw you raise your hands. All of you. I give the Koreans a second chance now. Look at the screen now. They're on the screen. <laughs> raise your hands again, those of you who wish to, for me to tell you whether your desire for happiness is worldly or not. <laughs> One. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> now they hesitate. <laughs> Two. Okay. That's it? Two out of six people? Oh, these Koreans are not honest. <laughs> worldly, 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 worldly. Don't have to raise your hands. Worldly, 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 worldly. <laughs> Why is that? Yes, go ahead. Uh, number, I can't see a number six. I'm giving number six a chance. Why is it, is it worldly? We, we still have confused minds. Do you have confused mind? Number one. The same question, same answer, yes? Yeah. Think. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, um, uh, 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 contradicting uh, myself, but you know, uh, in the in the sutras, they I think it, it won't was, uh, be the first time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in the in the Avatamsaka Sutra, it says that um, the the I think the first ground or something. We were talking about first ground or, or one of those grounds, and they said that the ground is called the ground of happiness because he's so happy because they uh, constantly think about the Buddha and always follow the Buddha. So our happiness is, is worldly because it's rooted in, uh, like the Sixth Patriarch said, like the uh, things outside of ourselves, not in our Buddha nature. Mm, very good. q and A. I'm uh, touching my, yeah, the Sixth Patriarch. My guess is that um, Master looks like, uh, sorry, wow. S sorry, it's really loud here. So my guess is Master looks at, who uh, raises their uh, raise their hands and depends on the level of the people. Uh, if you are uh, above certain level, uh, it's 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 different. Depends on what where you are. Okay, so good point. So for San Jose, we 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 talked about Korea Jewel Mountain Temple already, where Master Z is, and they're all worldly. Yes. Okay, we agreed on that. All five right there are worldly desire for happiness, for drinking, for eating, for cultivating, for sleeping, and so forth. Yes? That makes them happy. Yeah, all five, right there. One, two, three, four, five, that I see on the screen. Okay? They want to be happy? Worldly! Okay, switch to San Jose, please. Can we have 
people who would like to know whether the desire for happiness is worldly or not. Raise your hand, please. <laughs> yes? Huh? Okay. Okay, three people. Okay. F five people. Yeah, that's it? Five people. Worldly, worldly, <laughs> worldly, very worldly, extremely worldly in the back. <laughs> yes, uh, spine number two. Master, it was a trick question. You worded it yourself. Raise your hand if your desire for happiness is worldly or not. The, the phrase, desire for happiness, automatically makes it worldly already. I swear to God, <laughs> one day. Uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So what's the difference between worldly and not worldly people? Worldly happiness and, and not worldly happiness. What's the difference? Yes, number nine. It's a very Catholic perspective, but I would say it. Um, anything that comes from God, that you are connected with God, is true mm. happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a lost cause, what can we say? <laughs> Q&A, go ahead. Thank you, Master. Um, the difference is that worldly happiness is not permanent. No, sweetheart. I adore you, but that's the wrong answer. <laughs> okay, thank you, Master. <laughs> I can be gentle. Okay. Okay. Let me explain to you the difference. Why is worldly happiness or not worldly happiness? Happiness is worldly because you are worldly. If you are worldly, everything you do is worldly. Whether it's anger, whether it's greed, whether... It's goodness, whether you do philanthropy, whether you build a church, whether you speak Dharma, it's all worldly. Agree or disagree? Hmm? Right? You can say all you want. I have a PhD in Buddhology. I am, my IQ is 230. 160 is genius, by the way. 230 is like out of sight. Okay. Mm. Yes, sir. Number number nine. So that would mean that when you're in samadhi, that will be worldly too. Let me finish. <coughs> don't, don't jump the gun, Catholic. Uh, if you are a worldly person, everything you do is worldly. You can you can make any claims you want to, because your vision. Your understanding, your motivations are worldly. Whereas if you are enlightened, like Masha Shrinhoa, okay, everything he did was not worldly. Everything. Anything he did. So worldly, not worldly, is in the beholder. Okay? If you are a confused person, everything you do is worldly. If you are an enlightened person, you can, be, you can be doing evil things, but actually, it's transcendental. Believe it or not. For example, I have eyesight proof. In the history of Buddhism in Asia, there's a monk by the name of Sudian. Hmm? Tedian. Okay? The famous monk Taoist. He's crazy. He, he, he drinks. He eats meat. You know, he, 
he, uh, he uh, doesn't tear his temples, he doesn't cultivate. Okay? But everything he did, under your eyes, are worldly. Okay? But everything he did was transcendental. Believe it or not. Okay? Does it help? So it's, it's no point in arguing, you know, uh, the merits of worldly and the characteristics of worldly and unworldly and so forth and go through an uh, a, uh, analysis of, of that concept. It's about you. Okay? We're confused. It's because everything we do is confused. You can call anywhere you want. It's still confused. Ultimately, you do things to hurt yourself. And people with wisdom, like the bodhisattvas, everything they do is not worldly. All right? That's how we stop here today. Uh, yes, has a question Just here? A yes, sir. Reminder, you asked for a reminder uh, to say something about sanuk sunimim bowing. No, it's too late now. Too late. Time okay. is up. Yeah. Can we do? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have some, uh, the Pom Hyun Sunim here. Sanuk Sunim, are you there? Okay. Sangwook Sunim. Could you, uh, okay. Sangwook Sunim. Yes, Master. Okay. Would you mind going to the front there in the, in the white uh, carpet area and do some bowing, please? Bow to the Buddha. Demonstrate to us how you bow to the Buddha. Okay, uh, all right. That's not how you bow this morning. This woman keeps on confusing me. <laughs> when she first came out our temple, uh, the Koreans, when they bow to the Buddha, they open their hands and then they lift the Buddha up. Okay, so they exercise. Okay. Uh, they, the, the, am I correct, hey, uh, Korean people? You, you taught to bow the Buddha and you, you bow, open your hands and you lift them up like this. Yes? Okay? Uh, uh, we call it in the U.S., in the Korean is normal, call U.S., this is exercising, using the Buddha as weight. Okay? Uh, it's uh, uh, not advisable to use the Buddha as exercise. The Korean is definitely very serious, you know. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay? This is exercise. Think about it. You know why it's called exercise? Because the Buddha, when you bow, the Buddha, you bow to someone, if they accept your bow, it's the equivalent of they actually step on your, f your hands. Okay? And that's why you open your hands to receive their feet. This is why the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, as soon as they, before they receive someone, they wash their feet. Because they don't want to walk, you know, step on your, your bare hands with uh, their dirty feet. Understand now? The Buddha, after he came back from the arms, roll, uh, arms bowl rounds, he washed his feet first. Okay? So that's why. So this movement here uh, for us it's kind of uh, 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 too Korean. <laughs> so I told them, I told Vera Sangwook, you know, stop doing that. You're in America now. Okay? So what did he do? This morning, I, sh I noticed I was watching the screen, okay? Uh, as I was chanting, of course, uh, and looking at the screen for inspiration. I saw her bow, and her bow she bowed like this. And I said, hey, girl, be careful. Your Buddha steps on your head. He'll, he'll crush you. <laughs> he'll crush your head. I mean, you, you're supposed to bow, you know, to bow properly. You know, like, you, when you bow, it's you open your, your, your hands to receive the feet. Remember that, okay? Yeah. Don't bow like this. Okay, don't bow like this. Don't bow like this. I'm with this morning, you go, oh, God. <laughs> 
Okay? Uh, all right. So you, you bow, you bow, and she hands you be in front of you. I think I taught them before, but I, they, they weren't paying attention. You please, lay people and left home people, co- help me correct them. Because, uh, because it's uh, uh, too time consuming to teach in every one of them. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Yeah.